Poland fell to a combined German and Soviet invasion in 1939, but its army kept fighting. The lucky few who escaped abroad fought on, refusing to admit defeat. Some were recruited into the Silent Unseen, an elite group of operators airdropped far behind enemy lines to train and lead Poland's underground army. In this video, we shed light on the unremembered men and women of the Silent Unseen. After the SS fabricated an incident on the Polish-German border, 2,000 tanks, 900 bombers, and nearly 1.5 million Axis soldiers advanced into Poland. The Polish government believed the French and British would come to their aid, so they ordered the large but generally ill-equipped Polish army to defend the country's border instead of retreating to protect the cities. Spread too thin, they were smashed by concentrated German forces. But the Poles were encircled rather than annihilated, giving small units an opportunity to escape. On September 27th, on the largely undefended eastern side of the country, the Soviet Union invaded. This was the last straw for the Polish government, who until that point had still been holding out for a miraculous British and French offensive to save them from destruction. The government dissolved and the army largely disbanded. Hitler had no real issue with Poles leaving Poland, as that was part of his great resettlement plan for Eastern Europe. The way was open, and the Polish government as well as many ex-servicemen made their way to France. The French took advantage of the glut of professional soldiers and incorporated several Polish units into the French army. Four divisions of experienced soldiers were formed alongside a motorized brigade. During the Battle of France, the Polish forces often held out for longer and under far tougher conditions than the rest of the French army. Polish officers had also tried to warn the French about Germany's blitzkrieg tactics, but they were ignored. As France fell, Poles fighting their second losing battle of the war managed to escape over the channel to Britain. One of these men was Captain Jan Gorski, and he had an interesting idea. Gorski had read reports on the German invasion of Norway and became particularly interested in paratroop operations. He believed airdropping soldiers into occupied Poland was the best way to support the underground army and fight the occupying powers. The Polish army had no experience with paratroops, so the plan initially got a cold reception. It was only when General Sikorski took a liking to the idea that it was approved. However, it had a different name, Section 3 of the Commander-in-Chief's Staff. The operatives, however, called themselves the Silent Unseen. Training for these operatives was extremely rigorous, and only 605 of the original 2,413 candidates passed. It was run by Special Operations Executive, the British precursor to the CIA, and comprised five phases. Phase 1 was a strenuous physical exercise course designed to build up the candidate's stamina and resilience. In Phase 2, they learned to use every weapon of the British, German, Italian, Soviet and Polish armed forces and to withstand interrogation. Phase 3 was the jump course where the candidates learned to parachute in the wilds of Scotland. In Phase 4, they were taught covert operations which included combat jiu-jitsu and clandestine warfare techniques. And lastly, in phase five, the candidates were given a false identity. If they passed these challenges, they were sworn in as members of the Polish underground Home Army and kept their original Polish ranks. However, it was tradition that at the moment an operative exited the plane for their first mission, they were promoted one rank. Between February 15th, 1941 and December 27th, 1944, 483 airdrop missions were flown from bases in Britain to occupied Europe. 316 soldiers and 28 government agents were successfully parachuted into Poland, along with a few hundred tons of material. 
17 other operatives were dropped in Albania, Greece, France and Yugoslavia with orders to stir up the Polish minorities and focus the efforts of the resistance. Additionally, 40 million forged Polish zloty, 26 million US dollars in banknotes and gold coins, 1700 pounds sterling in gold coins, and three and a half million Reichsmarks were smuggled with them, so they had a little spending money. But they didn't just bring cash and guns. The operatives were also airdropped with machine parts required to tool up small-scale workshops and blueprints for manufacturing cheap weapons. The Sten gun was a particular favorite, as it was cheap to make from stamped metal and had an easily copied design. As you might have guessed, the vast majority of the Silent Unseen operators were expecting their missions to be one way, no return. But this wasn't the case for them all. One man, Tadeusz Szuk Selt, returned alive from not one, but two missions in occupied Poland. Szuk Selt, codenamed Kelt, made his first combat jump on December 27th, 1941, with a small group of other operatives. They were spotted by a German patrol just after landing, and a firefight broke out. Kelt and his team took a few casualties, but they killed the Germans and proceeded with their mission. His objective was to analyze the state of the Polish underground government and its military forces and report this back to London. He spent several months compiling his report alongside senior Polish underground leaders, but that was the easy part. Getting out of occupied Europe was the real challenge. Once his report was complete, Kelt infiltrated his way onto a Polish train bound for Hungary. He then stole a priest's vestments and posed as the Hungarian Catholic Father Andor Varga. This allowed him to cross into Croatia, then Switzerland, then France. Once he was over the French border, he swapped his costume for a worn set of overalls and a flat cap, perfect for his next disguise as a French railway man. Maintaining his cover the whole way, Kelt crossed the entirety of France and Andorra, only to be arrested once he'd crossed into Spain. He was then held at the Miranda de Ebro concentration camp, but swapped identities with a dying man and managed to secure his own release. From there, he journeyed to Gibraltar and caught a flight back to London. 18 months after his jump, he presented his report. Chuck Selt was one of the first to return from Europe with first-hand accounts of Germany's final solution. His outstanding valor won him Poland's highest military decoration, the Virtuti Militari, but his odyssey wasn't over yet. In April 1944, Kelt was dropped over occupied Poland a second time. He had two missions. First, to inform the underground government of the results of the Tehran Conference, and second, to protect the 56-year-old Dr. Rettinger, who was to negotiate a settlement with the Soviets. Again, Kelt was successful, and both men made a dramatic escape to Britain via a secret plane on July 26, 1944. Adolf Pilch, codenamed Gora, was airdropped into Poland on the night of February 16, 1943. The Home Army put him in charge of their operations in the Białystok region and the Novogrudek district. He soon made his presence felt. Gora linked up the disparate groups of Polish partisans living in the forest and combined them into one large and effective force. At its peak, Gora's partisan unit had a fighting strength of 1,000 and was complete with a dedicated cavalry unit, stormtroopers, and heavy weapons. On the Polish-Belarusian border, he battled both the Germans and their Belarusian auxiliary troops. In December 1943, the communist partisan commanders in Moscow disavowed the Polish Home Army, and Gora began fighting the Soviets too. He realized that, with the Axis on the run, the Soviets presented a more substantial threat to Polish nationalism. He entered a temporary ceasefire with the Germans so his unit could tackle the Soviet threat head on. In June 1944, Gora's partisan unit was running critically low on supplies. It was not receiving aid from Home Army Central Command because of the ceasefire, and with Operation Bagration in full swing, things would only get worse. In return for ending the ceasefire, Gora was given the supplies he needed, and with them, he annihilated an entire SS battalion. On the night of September 2nd, 
Gora's partisans crept through the darkness of Kampanos Forest toward the village of Truskov. Stationed there was a battalion of SS Rona, a unit of Russian and Belarusian Nazi volunteers infamous for their war crimes during the Warsaw Uprising. Gora's partisans took revenge that night, killing 250 SS soldiers and wounding another 100 for the loss of only 20 of their own dead and wounded. The Russian SS brigade was scattered and shortly afterwards they were withdrawn from SS commanders to Slovakia where the Poles couldn't reach them. Gora continued to fight until the war's end, first with the partisans and later as an officer in the home army. He was strongly opposed to a Polish Soviet satellite state and consequently had to escape to the West in January 1945. He remained in London and was awarded a silver Virtuti Militari for his service during the war. He'd fought in over 200 battles and came out of nearly all of them victorious. That was the incredible story of the Silent Unseen, Poland's top secret spec ops force of World War II. But what do you think? Why do you think Hitler allowed so many Poles to escape to France early on? Could you have made a journey across Europe like Celt? Who do you think was the worst enemy for Poland? Germany or the Soviet Union? Let us know in the comments.